somebody already wrote a vampire book. I have to start over. I know. Werewolves. Yeah. Just reading one of my favorite books here in Hollywood. And I have, oh, look, somebody's here. Hi, I'm Lisa Yi. Th these are my friends. And uh, I'm an author. And I have written, like, so many books. I've written, like, a hundred or a thousand. I've, that, I've written over a thousand books. I, well, okay, um, I've read over a thousand books. I haven't written over a thousand books yet, but I have written a bunch of books. I would say like a typical day for me is to um, get up and eat something and then do my email and go on Facebook and then have a snack and then I probably like go on Facebook some more and then I have a snack. Oh, see, you, you just caught me writing because that's, that's what I do. I write all the time. I am a writing maniac. I mean, I love writing so much. Nothing can get me away from writing. I never procrastinate. All I do is write, 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 like practically 22-7. No, I like the, the cut your ears, they're looking good and, it, oh, hi. Okay, so this is my office and um, it, let me give you a tour. You guys can sit right there. So right over here, this is my writing chair that, um, right here, and I hardly ever sit in, and this is, uh, this is my stuff. I have a lot of stuff. And over here is where it all happens at my computer. And this is where I, I do all my writing. Plus I have a lot of books. And I have books all over the house. This is really cool. These books over here, these two shelves here, these are all autograph books from my friends. Totally cool. Here's my big printer. Here's one of my dogs. Here's some of my bears. I have a lot of toys, because I think you need a lot of toys. Oh, I know. Come here. I'm going to show you something that my kids don't know about. This is my secret stash. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so I wrote this book called um, Absolutely Maybe. <coughs> This is me get my hair in my face. Absolutely, maybe. And um, it was my first young adult novel. And it's about this girl. Her name is Maybe. Actually, her mother named her Maybelline after her favorite mascara. And they live in Kissimmee, Florida. Her mother likes to get married, so she's getting married for the seventh time. And uh, Maybe's kind of goth, you know? But her mother is like this ex alcoholic beauty queen who thinks that Maybe's like a total loser. So. When her mother's getting married for the seventh time, she meets this guy who does something pretty bad to Maybe. So Maybe runs away from home, and she goes in search of her father, who doesn't even know she exists. She goes with, with Ted, her best friend in Hollywood, who's a budding filmmaker. And when the three of them end up in L.A., they all try to carve out new lives for themselves. But they also go to some pretty cool places, like Groman's Chinese Theater and the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where they're in search of James Dean Starr. They go to the Griffith Park Observatory, and they go to Pink's Hot Dogs, eat the best hot dogs in the world. And they also go to a really cool clothing store, vintage of course, so they can all get some new duds. But what happens is, while Maybe is searching for her father, she's really searching for herself. We're at Pink's Hot Dogs in Hollywood, and this is one of Maybe's favorite places to eat. She and Ted come here all the time and get their hot dogs. Here's an actual movie star in Hollywood. <laughs> All the way to Pink's Hot Dogs in Hollywood, he jabbers non-stop about his parents. I know, I know, Mom. I miss you, he says. He lowers his voice and I try not to listen. By the time we get to Pink's, Ted has Yo-Yo Ma blasting on the stereo. As usual, the tables are full, so we sit on the curb. I've ordered one of Pink's famous chili dogs. Ted has a plain hot dog with extra relish. We share onion rings. I take a first bite of my hot dog and savor the crunch. I swear the hot dog pops when you bite into it. As I reach for an onion ring, Ted casually says, Hey, maybe. Your dad called. We're at the 
Jet Rag right now. We're at Jet Rag right now, and this is where maybe Hollywood and Ted buy their clothes. All right, these are platform shoes. Um, this is what Ted wears. These are actually not the same ones that he would be wearing. This is the kind of stuff. We're at Roman's Chinese Theater right now where a couple of scenes that absolutely maybe take place. Everybody is gathered to talk about the book. When Maybe came to Grumman's Hollywood Theater, she tried putting her hands in the cement to see if they were the same size as the, as the actors. reading the names of the stars in the Walk of Fame. Hollywood feels the need to lecture us in excruciating detail. We would move faster, but Ted seems extremely interested in what Hollywood has to say. We pass Mickey Rooney's star, and suddenly Hollywood comes to a dead stop. Ted and I crash into him. 1719 Vine Street, Hollywood's voice trembles. He takes extra care cleaning his lens before turning on the camera. We all stare at James Dean's star. We're at the Griffith Park Observatory now at the bust of James Dean. As we make our way toward the group, Hollywood stops at a bust of James Dean. We pause for a moment of silence and then continue on. Hollywood's favorite movie was Rebel Without a Cause. It was shot at the Griffith Park Observatory. Slowly I step into the taco truck. It feels like the first time I've ever been here. I tie a fresh apron around my waist and fire up the grill and the burners. At first I overcook the carne asada, so I have to do it over. I sprinkle too many onions on the carnitas. I spill the salsa. But after a while I start getting into the rhythm and stop thinking about Uncle Benny. Instead, I think about tacos. A good taco is a work of art. It's not showy or pretentious. It's unfussy. It's familiar, yet each bite is like a wonderful surprise. The meat is grilled just right, slightly crisp at the edges, but juicy and tender when you bite down. We use only the fresh ingredients like firm red tomatoes and deep green cilantro. The, arm, the onions are caramelized or chopped, depending on the order. Handmade yellow corn tortillas are warmed on the grill, never served cold. They are thick enough to hold the taco, but they don't overwhelm the fillings or fall apart. The salsa is made daily. The guacamole is hand mashed and chunky using ripe California avocados, green onions, and spices. The carrots and radishes are served on the side or pickled and crunchy. But really, it's all about the taco. Okay, so, I mean, this was fun. I had fun. I hope you had fun. You got to see my office and uh, meet some of my family and see my books and everything. But you know what? I would love to stay and talk to you guys, but I have some pretty important things to do. So I'll see you around, okay? All right, all right they're gone now. I know, I know, it was fun though. What do you want to do now? You want to dance? You can dance? You want to dance? You want to... Oh, <laughs> they're still here. Hi. Okay, see you guys later. You blinked. No, you blinked. I know. Well, let's dance. <laughs>